Another year of being a tailoring student, plus a year of being an intern now as well. I've sorted everything into three new categories. Essentials, what you should get and what you might like. Essentials is largely unchanged because I had already made it as minimal as possible, just the lowest possible barrier of entry to get into tailoring. Good to have are tools that aren't essential, but are useful. They'll allow you to properly make tailored stuff and things you ought to keep in the back pocket that you're going to make. We can get by without some of it or without alternatives that I'll lay out. You might like are bits that you don't need, but can come in handy and you can decide for yourself whether you want to use them or not. I'll take this opportunity to say that this is my experience and a small amount of asking what other tailors use and learning from other tailors. And I want to also say at this point that good equipment won't make a bad tailor good, it will however make a good tailor better. I'm going to start by talking about three things. Work surface, machine and equipment necessary thereof, and iron, and ironing board. These could almost support a video by themselves, but here's the abridged version. I started off with a normal sized desk. For practicing samples it's fine, but we'd have significant trouble when it comes to making patterns, pattern drafting. We wouldn't be able to get our cloth or fabric laid out correctly or completely flat. and. So I've known people just to use their floor or kitchen table if you're privileged enough for that. A good approaching minimum size is uh, about 90 by 150 centimeters like mine. I think a close to minimum would be around 70 by 120 centimeters. My personal one right now is plywood that I sanded and varnished and I put it on my bed when I want to work. A medium density fiber board board a medium density fiber board board is better for ironing because it's more porous. It also creates greater fric friction in the fabric. Putting a mat or cover over either of them makes them better for ironing but impedes when sewing on the table. It's not so good for pattern drafting either, so I think a good all round option is an MDF board, but it won't be as light as a 9mm ply like I have. If you can have a sewing table and an ironing board then I think that's neat. If I weren't making videos that would probably be my choice. I have a sewing machine, it's just the one my mum had, so I'm in no position to talk about how and where you should buy sewing machines. Industrial wise, everyone will say that a Jack F4 industrial sewing machine is a good starter and I'm probably going to get one at my earliest convenience. Equipment necessary thereof includes bobbins and bobbin cases and basic maintenance equipment, basically just oil and possibly a brush. Not all irons were created equal. A steam iron which can get hot is important for us though. I'm not in any position to get a commercial iron, but there are similar domestic irons with large separate bases like commercial ones. First and foremost in essential equipment is a thimble. A tailor's thimble is important because it's being worn for extended periods of time, so it's open topped so that it's more breathable. With normal open top thimbles like these ones, you had definitely better try them on before buying them. I definitely don't recommend buying them online unless you get an adjustable one, which I kind of don't recommend to be honest, not anymore. A proper, thim a proper thimble is important to use because you need to be able to move at a certain pace, otherwise you're going to get bored and give up. 
but also pain. Using a needle has its own method used by tailors too, but that's in another video. The long and short of it is that if you want to be a tailor, you need to be able to use the equipment and use it properly. Although it seems like a lot of people, <laughs> students, <laughs> are deciding to get by without for the first year, I also I'm told anyway, but I stitch faster than everybody else, it seems, I think. Thread, you won't get very far without thread. Cotton or polyester, they are largely interchangeable, but polyester is empirically better, it is stronger and cheaper, I think. I think that it's best to buy three 300 meter reels of something just like black that you can use anywhere for hand sewing or machining. I think reels like Coates or Tray Searchy are the best. It's inexpensive and yeah, they are useful for machining and hand stitching. And I know it's odd to count thread as a piece of equipment, but I think it'd be worse if I left it out. Basting thread, on the other hand, I definitely count that as a piece of equipment. We very often use it to temporarily hold together two or more bits of cloth before hand sewing or machining it together. So it needs to be able to tear and pull out easily. If you want to dip your toe into tailoring, then a small reel is good and it's a low upfront cost that'll last you a while. Beeswax is not a necessity or a luxury, it is an essential in my opinion. It prevents thread from twisting and coiling, and apparently makes it stronger. Try it using beeswax once and then try without and, you know, see what you think. Personally, it just, yeah, not going I always wax my hand sewing thread, except for my basting thread. Needles, we need needles, a multi-pack of just betweens, between the sizes of, of sizes three to nine is good, threes being large and nines being smaller. These days I find myself using just size sevens for everything and unless you have arthritis, I don't think you'll ever need more than size threes, larger than size threes. I'm sure you can use whatever. I don't know the significance of betweens. That's just what I was told. If you can sew with it, I'm sure that's fine. The general philosophy is to always try to use the smallest needle for the job. However, don't use However, I've been told to avoid using a needle that's thinner than the thread, otherwise every time you draw it through, the cloth is going to be dragging back on the thread more than it would be otherwise. As you use the thread, it will wear down more and more quickly and it'll break, which is why I stopped using nines for my own personal finishing. We need simple all-round scissors. The scissors I recommend are on the high-end side, about 20 pounds, these aren't it. You just need scissors that can cut out paper and basically anything else that isn't fabric. Although if they can cut through fabric, then I suppose that's advantageous. Right now, I'm just using my kitchen scissors because I lost my normal ones. With regard to chalk, you'll need to d decide for yourself whether you want squares or triangles. Hancock's chalk is what I'd recommend, I just think it's the best. Yellow is used for white fabrics and cloths, and blue and lightish red is used to determine asymmetries. But if you're using lining paper like I do, rather than brown pattern card, then maybe you'll need to use coloured chalk on those anyway. So you could definitely use blue or lightish red anywhere else. We need any kind of ruler. I think a quilting ruler, being a transparent ruler with grids on it, is good. But a more planned pattern master is what I've had since eh, day one. Never mind. 
and what I'd recommend. That said, if it's not possible, then a 30 centimeter just normal quilting or regular ruler will do fine. If you can get a pattern master, then that makes any other kind of ruler, in my opinion, just a necessity, just an added extra, I think. But I think a 30 centimeter ruler is probably a, the best all rounder ruler. And if you can get it a inch thick, then, you know, built in inlays. Stationary, you won't get very far if you can't draw patterns. So pens, pencils, an eraser, which I've got somewhere, I know I do. Masking tape, also especially necessary if you have, if you're using lining paper from B&Q instead of normal pattern card, because you'll need to tape them together to draft a jacket. Masking tape, you can draw over and remove mostly safely if needs be. A glue stick can also come in handy with patterns. Having done a fitting, you can increase or I guess decrease the size of patterns without using so much, without having to draft a whole new pattern. Notebooks and sketchbooks are more helpful than I'd have first expected. I don't get good ideas very often, so when I do, I can just sketch them down and execute them later. Also, I recommend these Penco pencils, they're quite nice, I think. Slightly off topic, but related, you might like a Sharpie. Label all your stuff, especially if you go to school with it, like me, or you work in this industry. Uh, apparently it takes too much effort to go to lost property or even return the stuff you borrow, I'm told. To start off what is good to have, I suggest a container of some sort. Now, technically, to be fair, a container is more of an essential. When you have some equipment, I suggest you find a container that comfortably fits it. Find, I didn't buy my basket, I just, it was just a convenient size, so I asked for it and fits comfortably, as you might want to add to your kit later, but you might also be streamlining as you find things and decide whether they work for you or not. It doesn't even have to be a box, I mean, could be. I like using tiered storage trolleys and those like IKEA storage boxes, the scubs I think. I'll renege on telling you how much you should be spending on fabric scissors. But obviously the more you spend, in most cases, the better pair of scissors you'll get. In most cases. I think we can find fabric scissors for as little as £20 around. What's special about and important to note about fabric scissors is that the angle on the blade is much more steep than regular scissors. So, by extension, they are much sharper, but also more delicate which is why you also hear about getting scissors sharpened. It's sentimental, it's just sentimentality and being cost efficient. This is why you should also only use them on fabric and not paper or anything like else like that, which is why all purpose scissors are an essential while fabric scissors, I don't think are as essential. In short, they aren't essential, but if you have some extra money to invest in your tailoring equipment, then fabric scissors are a pretty good place. I bought my I bought Kai 7280 scissors from Mac and Wallace, the same brand as the Japanese scissors I recommend that I have in Essentials but that is something for you to decide on. Like I said, I mostly only use size seven, size seven needles now. So I think getting a, so once you've determined your preferred size, you could get a pack of 25 of the needles you like. 
I'd assume they dull and in my experience they bend over time. So having 25 of one size is just a decent long term strategy. Plus I keep losing them. Like I said I'm usually always using 7s except when I'm working and I'm given 9s to finish with. In a pinch you could use needles as pins which is why they aren't an essential. I got a pack, pack of black needles because I thought they looked cool but I'm told that the oh, but it says that the oxidized finish on them can rub off on light materials but that hasn't happened to me yet. I'm told they are pretty good and sharp compared to some other needles so that's probably good. If you know you want to do a lot of tailoring and this isn't just a fad for you then I wholeheartedly suggest you get a big reel of basting thread. It is just the economical option. A reel might literally last for years, this is maybe a year and a half now, I'm not sure, but it's five times the price as the smaller reels but you literally get 25 times the amount of thread. Now these ones I can't seem to find anymore but you know basting thread, basting threads, basting thread. You should get a long ruler at some point. These were just gifted to me and I found this one at a this one at a market. It'll help with measuring, pattern drafting and lay planning and I think that's about it. We also need a square. We need when we draft patterns it is very important that we can make long right angle long right angled lines. My more plan pattern master does this is very helpful with this. But there are also things like Fairgate pattern rulers and other plastic and other nice wooden rulers that you can find to measure right angles as well. With regard to tape measures, definitely get one with a about like a 10 centimeter tab on the end. It'll help you out when measuring yourself and other people. A sleeve board is especially useful when pressing open seams on sleeves and trousers and pressing over curved seams. I bought mine from William Gee. It's nice and collapsible for £17. I would have preferred a nice wooden one but at this time in my life I realistically need a light and collapsible one though I think you may be able to find one in Wilco for a pound fifty that's comparable. I couldn't though. If you need a an alternative then I used to use my plank of wood. This is fairly new. An edge board is practically the same thing as a sleeve board but it's much thinner and usually pointed at one end so that you can open seams basically. It's You could easily use a pine plank again though it's a bit more fiddly than that because it doesn't stand up by itself very well. A tailor's ham or tailor's cushion is also very important. It is good for pressing open seams like the sides of trousers and side seams for basically just things that should not, shouldn't be ironed flat and sometimes can't be ironed flat. And they're used more often in final ironings in the, at the final ironing stage of making. When we are cutting fabric out on our board we need to make sure that the patterns aren't moving around on the cloth. So we use weights to keep everything where it's supposed to be otherwise we're just wasting the effort we put into making the pattern because it's changing it obviously. There are alternatives like you could use basically anything with weight. I like, like whiskey glasses and bars of soap. Having something with a good weight to keep your pattern flat just on hand will be very useful.
you should really hang the patterns that you make to keep them flat and safe. <laughs> it's much more difficult to use a patterns when patterns when they're trying to roll and coil while you're trying to trace them out onto cloth. Hooks are inexpensive, but you can jerry rig systems with just string and coat hangers. And on that topic, I feel like having coat hangers should go without saying. Now, it's not exactly equipment that you go out and buy, but universal pattern, paper pattern templates are, they'll just, you'll make them for yourself once and you can just keep reusing them. I have a bearer that I don't really use, the side tab adjusters, my side tab adjusters that I made a while ago, and a DAX top template. I don't use a jacket collar template, but it is, but I think most people do use a universal one. We definitely should use silk to finish our work. It's just the, it's just the standard thing to use, and it gives our stuff a greater chance of longevity. To begin with, however, we don't necessarily need to go out and buy silk to finish for our samples and practice runs. We can, but it's more important that the stitching is correct and neat and in the correct places. When we do start making things, we should, f we should finish it with silk. Most tailor shops will have Gutemann pre-waxed lengths of silk, which in either dark grey or black. They have these exclusive, they have these colours exclusively because they are the most versatile and white as well. There are many other colours available though, but I don't recommend this for us, like practitioners, unless we're opening a shop or you're absolutely minted, but it is economical. There is also NBT Furrier Waxed Skine. It's synthetic silk that seems to be gaining popularity. It's finer so that you can so you can get a greater fin a better finish on your work and it's cheaper so makers can stock more color options. Personally, I buy 10 meter reels of silk or boxes of 10 meter reels of silk from Mac and Wallace in the color that I want from my for any given project. This one I just use to finish on my Silesia. It looks different, but it's better together. And I'll, like I said, I'll buy a box of 10. We often need a press cloth, either calico or Silesia works. It's just a piece of scrap cotton cloth and it's what I've used almost exclusively. Having a designated piece of clean cloth to put between your iron and fabric will be useful when we get to fine, delicate, or fabrics that'll shine when ironed. Similarly, a piece of scrap to press waxed thread that'll kind of have to be, that'll have to be replaced kind of often and I have scraps that I use when cutting, when making buttonholes as well. A buttonhole punch is really rather necessary when it comes to creating, to start sewing buttonholes. A revolving buttonhole is the norm. There are cool Japanese hole punches you can get or normal leather ones, which I think this technically is. It is possible to get by early days without a hole punch, just cutting the hole with our scissors. But when you start really getting into it, then a hole punch really becomes uh, an essential for buttonholes. An awl is a tool that you use to make unbroken holes through fabric by basically just moving the fibers out of the way rather than cutting through them. It is a small tool that becomes progressively wider 
we use it on our trouser waistbands when we put on the bars of from two-piece catch-ons. We can do without one. I have largely I have used large needles and I forget what they're called, the helical nails. And I found that to be quite useful. The difference between this and a braddle is that a braddle doesn't get progressively wider, so not so useful in this case. As you start making things for yourself and others, you might decide to get colours of thread the same colour as the fabric you're working with. So it isn't something you kind of go out and buy. It just sort of builds up over time. As you, well, I'd say as you can see, but I put them all away. To go with this, you might like to get yourself a bobbin case to keep yourself organised. Multiple colours of thread isn't wholly necessary. You could largely use the same colour for colours for all your work. Probably black though. I know one tailor that seems to use black for everything. Still using the fabric coloured thread for finishing though. Something I've recently found useful are tiny pairs of scissors for just for cutting threads and seams apart. Colloquially referred to as just snips. There's the stalk embroidery pair that are good, particularly good I think, because they are blunt on the tip. We can use them to stick under basting without having to worry about catching the fabric, the weave of the fabric, and tear out the basting that we already cut using them. Get real ones, not discount counterfeits, but you can also find like Kai 550s and various other things. I'm also not sure how to determine real ones against fake ones. There's also the thread snips, which I think you can find by just looking up thread snips, that, which are faster to just grab and use because they are spring-loaded and there's no finger holes. In my experience, Japanese nigiri ones aren't worth the price over a 2 dollars pair. They're, they're the same, and the time I tried them, they just didn't work. Like, they literally weren't cutting the thread. If you've seen my updated trouser waistband video, you've likely seen how we can use tweezers to make belt loops, but they can also be used for other tweezery things like pulling out mark stitches and difficult bits of basting. <laughs> There's a couple of types and they both have more specific uses, but as illustrated in the aforementioned video, we can use either either of them for most things. I think a loop puller is used largely in the production industry, and we c but we can use it to make belt loops. It may be the fastest way to make belt loops making a long tube and pulling it through rather than seven or eight smaller tubes with our tweezers. Clapper, a clapper is literally a block of wood, again. They are used as a post iron press. It'll absorb any moisture from the fabric which hasn't evaporated and help to cool the cloth more quickly, setting creases and seams more fully and quickly. Mine is a scrap from a pine plank. It's something porous, so it can easily absorb heat and moisture. Working as an intern, I've picked apart a... Well, I've lost count of the number of trousers, but I've but I think an unpicker is the best and or fastest way of doing it. I don't know, it's always in the my first sewing kit kind of stuff, isn't it? However, I might mention that where I've been picking apart trousers, the trouser maker I intern with has barred the use of unpickers. It's easy to slip and tear ass through cloth when using an unpicker. I haven't done it, but I get the impression that somebody did. Now, a multi-tool, it's a multi-tool. I have one, so 
I put it in my with my sewing kit you know it's useful when it's useful like I said blue and lightish red chalk can come in handy when you're dealing with people who have asymmetries it's not exactly useful it's not exactly where I am yet but it'll come in useful later and like I said again good if you're using white card rather than brown card and just white chalk wouldn't show up on it and also like I said yellow chalk is good for white or very light materials light colored materials Hancock's has its own good chalk pencils they are good for more precise curved lines if you want to draw on the detacks before sewing them on either side of your trouser pockets, hip pockets, or for making buttonholes to hole punch, or for poking through the buttonholes that you've hole punched so that you know where the button needs to go, like on button flies. Wax chalk is objectively better than regular ass chalk. It sharpens more easily, it retains its edge more easily, it's sharper and can be easily ironed out when we're done with it. It's not quite a substitute for normal chalk though because it irons out easily. It's something that you can use in places like where you want to. Tailor's soap is something that some tailors swear by and that others refuse to use. I, I'll pra It's practically short-term fusing. You'll see me use it on waistbands and it can be good for holding open seams. It's something you might look want to look into as you start making more and more. It's also pretty good for removing stains from cloth. You can rub some onto the stain and use some warm water and a damp some warm water on a damp cloth and rub it away. Or just it'll rub off over time and taking the stain with it. Ziploc bags are super convenient for keeping buttons and other small things. I also use it to keep my wax only as dirty as it currently is, although it came in the thing, so I just keep using it. And especially when you start making a few projects at a time, we can keep the small trimmings for a specific project all together. To be fair, I started using a chopstick instead of a knitting needle for zero pounds and zero pence. So I use it to turn out things like side tabs. Plus we can use the tip tips to massage out uh, corners and such like. I wouldn't have gotten a knitting needle. It's too expensive to be bothered, but they are useful. So, if money is no object, but if it is, and a valuable object at that, any stick with a smooth rounded point will do. A spray bottle is useful, more specifically when we're using commercial irons because domestic irons have that function built in. We can use it to press out and press in harder creases in fabric. or certain fabrics and definitely not spraying on linings. Working, I have a pin magnet to hold my pins. I pull them off just to hold things together that I'm about to machine. Then when I'm at the machine, I take them out and put them, stick them into a pin cushion that is on the machine. It sounds kind of backwards saying out loud, but it is very useful. With regard to pin cushions, I have my Kiwi. I use it in my preserve, proverbial studio workshop so that I can keep save loaded needles for later rather than just discarding and reloading. I mean, I know whether we want a pin cushion. I feel like I think I'm just over explaining it. Being high quality and weighted is something useful that I never would have thought about. You can just 
pull needles out without picking up the entire pincushion and having to use two hands. But also, having a pincushion means that I'm not keeping pins loaded in my reel of basting thread. We can use a thing like a something like a kitchen paper towel dispenser for our basting thread. I've never seen one just in one of the videos that the that university gave me instead of teaching me, but it looks useful. If you have one in our workspace or main workspace, then it's simple to have and you can just pull on your big reel of basing thread and it'll unspin when you want some thread. We'd use a notch cutter to for our patterns once we've finished cutting them out, a tool to simply cut notches into our pattern to make them easier to chalk out. A cloth brush will straighten out fibres when you're done sewing a seam, hand sewing a seam, and it'll likely remove any chalk marks. Though we can use some of the same cloth as what we've chalked on to rub off the chalk, and that's also very useful. We can also use a toothbrush for more precise cut, for more precise brushing. Kind of in the same way that we have a cloth brush, if we have a cloth work surface, not like my one, it'll get threads and lint and stuff stuck to it. So we can use a cloth brush or a lint roller to clean it so that it doesn't get onto another pair of trousers, which is especially risk, especially likely to happen with a light pair of trousers. Something we need is a chalk sharpener. I mean, need is a strong word because we can definitely use alternatives like our scissors or a metal ruler. You can likely go your entire tailoring career without an actual dedicated sharpener. What's important is more how you sharpen than what you sharpen with. Like, for example, some sharpeners, quite expensive ones, I think, can give you the ideal angle for sharpening if you use it correctly. Pinking shears inhibit cloth from fraying too badly. Some professionals use them for cutting parts of the cloth they're using on the inlays, especially on trousers if we don't have an overlocker. Although, only the inlay. We have mark stitches to follow on the inlay, but it'd be difficult to follow a pinked seam allowance. You might use them across the bottom of your trouser lining instead of using the selvage, or pink the hem instead of overlocking. Like using other colours of chalk, we can use alternative colours of basting thread to mark stitch asymmetries in garments. We don't necessarily need to use alternative colours, but it can make it clearer and easier to see. Also, also if you wanted to use just a different colour anyway, it'll look more interesting than white and be easier to see on lighter coloured materials. I think I used my tracing wheel in my jacket drafting video, my new one, and my waistcoat video. I don't know, I just feel kind of strange about tracing wheels. This is just a list to show you what you can get and what it's vaguely used for. A short 15 to 30 centimeter ruler is good if you don't have one yet. It's more mobile than both a pattern master, if you already have one of those, and a long ruler. It simply, it just simplifies smaller tasks for you. Plus, if you can find one that's an inch wide, like I said, it'll help you out when lay planning. Instant inlay measurement, isn't it? I don't know what a long blunt needle in the form of a bradle is useful for, but it's listed as a piece of equipment. I expect 
somewhat like an all alternative, if you like. Usually I'd be well on board for French curves, but not in this context. In the context of tailoring, French curves are used to draw different specific curves when pattern drafting. But personally, I can get by drawing curves freehand and with my pattern master. Firstly, I can fit almost my entire kit into my Fortnum and Mason basket that I took from my dad when he was given it as a hamper. All, all that I don't put in it is my long ruler and pattern master. It fits what I need, plus my bag of linen and fusing and bits. And I usually keep that on my shelf. I also have my daily carry kit that I take with me when I go to university. So that contains my thimble, needles and pins, small ruler, wax and cloth for pressing waxed thread, a reel of machine thread, bobbins wound with the same thread and bobbin cases for the industrial machines that I use when I'm at university, a small reel of basting thread, normal and wax chalk, my stalk embroidery scissors, some 9cm squared pieces of fusing, and a small block of my cloth soap. I keep these in a small bag. And separately, in my laptop bag, or whichever bag I happen to be carrying that day, I keep my fabric scissors, my all-purpose scissors, if I had them, these I just keep in my kitchen, foldable yardstick, pattern master, and my stationery, which I already put away. I keep my spares and just all the other stuff that I don't realistically need on a daily basis in my basket. So, for example, I have spare chalk, spare thimbles, needles, pins, and any leftovers that I just don't really need. I have a bag containing the things that are usually more helpful to me, like my chopstick in lieu of a knitting needle, hole punch, clapper, I guess, brattle, coloured basting thread, although that's not really useful, tape measure and masking tape, etc. That goes in the bag. Things that are less useful to me on a daily basis, like spare tape measure, spare wax, uh, tracing wheel and brattle, etc. Plus some antique things. I've got my various silk threads and various gimps. Things, basically a bag of trimmings in which are just smaller Ziploc bags with containing like items, I guess, and just and another bag that contains just sort of bits of scrap from projects that I might be able to reuse in future projects. I've got my things for my machine, various colours of sewing threads. I've got like my oil and cleaning stuff, spare needles in here, and my bobbin case. But recently I've been putting this, I never need this without my machine, so I've just been keeping this in the drawer next to my machine. I can keep my usual reel of basting thread in here, my multi-tool, pinking shears. And something recent that I've been doing, I've just been keeping basically just a few things in a storage box. I've been keeping my Kiwi out, some wax pressing thread, and my sleeve board out as well. And that, I think, is basically it. Just one more thing to say, this list is incomplete. You can help by expanding it.